Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to an all new Talking Movies. I am your host, the real Gino, Gino Reynolds, and today, I don't really even want to talk about this movie. Today, we're going to be talking about Axel, which, okay, come on, it's a carbon copy of many, 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 many other movies that you've seen before, and just to warn you, there is going to be spoilers in this review, and uh, I'll just tell you this, if you don't want to have anything ruined, I'm not going to recommend this movie, if you couldn't already have tell what I was going to say. So if you really don't want this movie spoiled, you've been warned. Axel is a top secret robotic dog who develops a special friendship with a young man, teenager, whatever. The movie never really explains it and will go to any length to protect his new companion. So what do you want me to say? This, that this isn't this year's monster trucks? Well, I can't because that's exactly what it is. A mildly more serious version of Monster Trucks. Uh, the premise is pretty much the same. The description that I read just a second ago could be applied to a ton of different movies, or at least similar to a ton of different movies, and not just recent ones. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Monster Trucks, Max Steel, Daryl, Short Circuit, Earth to Echo, and tons more. Hell, even Jim tried to incorporate something similar to this. This movie is based on a crowdfunded short film called Miles. Both are written and directed by Oliver Daly. Uh, in the short film, the robot dog is called Max, which I'm sure they probably had to change because there was already a series about a military doggy by that name. Uh, the movie shares tons of the same tropes as movies like Monster Trucks, a uh, mechanic type outsider boy finds something that has been mistreated, misused, or both by some shady ass company. Uh, boy and asset are at odds at first, but come to like each other. Uh, shady ass company wants their asset back. There's a hot girl that's interested in the guy because he's different, which pisses off some type of rival. Uh, boy introduces girl to asset main character has lost a parent, main character can stay away from home for long periods of time and not get in any trouble for some reason, main character makes a stupid decision like leaving the asset alone, uh, which gets the asset captured, main character finds a way to break out the asset, main character and asset have big chase scene running from the bad guys, good guys win in the end, boy gets the girl, and I'm sure there are others, but I just want to stop thinking about it. Uh, one thing that this movie had the great fruits to do uh, was sequel bait the audience. Uh, Axel flat out steals the ending from Big Hero 6, uh, having our hero uh, Doggy sacrifice itself to save the main character Miles by destroying itself, but not before uploading all of its save files to the cloud. So of course it can come back later. That's about it. Uh, there was one scene in this movie, though, that made me want to watch another movie. Um... And I'm not talking about the countless movies that are like this one. Uh, Miles' dad, Chuck, uh, is played by Thomas Jane. There is a scene where Chuck has to uh, get a jump on a soldier that is searching uh, for Miles at his house. Um, when the soldier's not looking, Chuck grabs a bow and arrow and gets the upper hand. Uh, he ties the soldier up and then says something along the lines of, I'm the one asking the questions now. And all I could think was... Go get the blowtorch, steak, and popsicles, and go to work, Frank. But unfortunately, I wasn't watching Jane's version of The Punisher. Uh, I will say this. If this movie changed a few things, went a lot darker, and became a bloody horror uh, R-rated movie, uh, it could have actually been really good. Uh, the design of Axel is pretty terrifying in the right context. Uh, it has buzz saws in its mouth, for crying out loud. Uh, in a way, I feel like this movie uh, was a missed opportunity. So that's about all I have for this one. Is this a safe movie that a family can go see? Well, yes. Is this a movie that took the time to be something that you haven't already seen done before? Sometimes better, sometimes worse. That's a big no. Is this movie worth more than a rental? I wouldn't even say that. I'd say save it for a Netflix viewing, but even then it's a toss-up. The characters, plot, and just about everything else was kind of boring. 
I'm not saying it's the worst movie of the year or anything, but those claiming that the Happy Time Murders is the worst movie this year, I'd say that it's not even the worst movie this week. That movie at least had some things to latch onto. All that Axel had was a cool design for a dog that belonged in a much better and bloodier movie. That's going to be all for this edition of Talkin' Movies. If you like what you've heard here, please subscribe to the Real Geno YouTube channel, like this video, and if you have anything to say about this movie, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Until next time, I'm your host, the Real Geno, Geno Reynolds. See you later.